SpaceX might be at the top of the commercial space flight industry today, but there was a time, not long ago, that another company was the biggest name behind NASA's ambitious space exploration projects. This company was none other than Kistler Aerospace. Sound familiar? Probably not. That's because by 2009, the company was done and dusted. Who was Kistler Aerospace? And how did SpaceX play a part in their destruction? To get to the bottom of this, we've got to go back to the beginning. Kistler Aerospace was founded in 1993 as a private company by Walter Kistler and Bob Citron in Kirkland, Washington. The main goal of the company was to supply NASA with fully reusable vehicles capable of entering Earth's orbit at an affordable price. During the 90s, the company quickly grew, thanks to significant investor funding and a strong workforce. It's worth noting that the current president of Blue Origin, Rob Meyerson, was a senior manager at Kistler Aerospace from 1997 to 2003. In the early 2000s, NASA became increasingly aware that its space shuttle days were coming to an end. Having no shuttle meant that NASA was not in the position to resupply the International Space Station. They had two options, either supply the ISS with foreign vehicles like the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, or to rely on the rockets built by US-owned commercial aerospace companies. The agency chose the obvious answer. They decided to award the contract to an American aerospace company, beginning the construction of a newly functional launch system that would deliver cargo to the ISS. The company awarded this contract was Kistler Aerospace. Since 1994, Kistler had been developing its rocket, the K-1, and it received partial funding for its development through a contract they'd won with NASA in 2001. However, in 2003, Kistler Aerospace filed for bankruptcy protection, so the $227 million contract they were awarded in 2004 would have been a major financial boost to the company. Just when things were taking off for Kistler, a small company turned everything upside down. A month before the contract was announced, a small and barely known company by the name of Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, protested that the contract was awarded non-competitively. According to the founder, some nobody named Elon Musk, he couldn't understand why more than a quarter of a billion dollars was being awarded to a company like Kistler, which had just declared bankruptcy the previous year and was yet to build a complete prototype of a rocket despite being in operation for 11 years. Musk further added that NASA would be held accountable for failing to create a competition for the contract, and this would send a very negative statement to the aerospace industry. SpaceX then sent a request to the Government Accountability Office to check the validity of such a single-source, non-competitive contract. The office ruled in SpaceX's favor, and they withdrew the Kistler contract in July of 2004. This forced NASA to go back to the drawing board and figure out a way to continue resupplying cargo to the ISS. They still didn't want to spend billions of dollars if they didn't have to. So the agency had to take advantage of the commercial space industry instead of traditional contractors. Now they had to come up with a fair process to award development funds. So they formulated a system known as COTS, or the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services. In this system, private space companies were selected to develop new technology that made it easier to resupply the ISS. Funding was to be given in stages based on meeting milestones laid out by NASA. This structure became a huge success because NASA was able to find companies that were eager to push themselves to win these lucrative contracts. Unlike your usual procurement system, NASA's COTS was quite unique. For example, it stated that each of the companies chosen had to pay part of the development costs. This made sure the companies were building something useful that they would later commercialize, like the Falcon 9. Musk would not have agreed to construct something new if they knew it would not be efficient long term. Second, the use of fixed price payments based on milestone achievements by NASA ensured that these companies worked on the project with very little oversight. It allowed NASA to transfer the development of the launch system completely to the company, knowing that milestone payments would motivate the companies to work even harder. It also meant that NASA didn't control the vehicle's requirements. They set up milestones for delivering reliable cargo service to the ISS, but they didn't specify any technical requirements that participating companies had to follow in order to achieve these objectives. So with a goal-driven incentive in place, fixed milestone payments, and sharing of development costs, NASA greatly reduced their oversight on the project. This allowed companies to move at their own pace and not have to wait for NASA to approve different elements of their designs. It also meant that NASA couldn't suddenly change its requirements in the middle of development, something that contractors are more than willing to accept because it means they can bump up costs. The initial funding allocated for COTS by NASA was $500 million. Of that money, $15 million was set aside by the space company to handle its administrative expenses. The agency then began accepting proposals from commercial space companies. In May of 2006, NASA shortlisted six semi-finalists. And then in August, the agency announced who the two Phase 1 winners of the COTS contracts were. One of them was Rocket Plane Kistler, which had rebranded from Kistler Aerospace after the company was acquired by Rocket Plane Limited earlier that year. While the K-1 rocket was still under development at the time, Rocket Plane Kistler received a $207 million deal 
while SpaceX was awarded $278 million. Also, SpaceX was still developing its Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon capsule. Because of failing to meet the milestones set up by NASA, rocket plane Kistler received only $32.1 million of the $207 million award. It was one of the most disappointing performances of any aerospace company. NASA had had enough, and in October of 2007, they terminated their contract. Now, it's crazy to think how different things could have been if SpaceX never lobbied the GAO for NASA to terminate its Kistler contract. Could we be watching the K-9 rocket blasting off into space instead of the Falcon 9 rocket today? Perhaps, but it's highly unlikely considering how incompetent Kistler was. The company would have probably continued to underperform, and NASA would have wasted hundreds of millions of dollars on a project whose schedule kept on floating away. Thankfully, a large portion of the funding that was allocated to rocket plane Kistler was still available to NASA, despite terminating the contract. With the second round of funding available, NASA awarded Orbital Sciences Corporation with a $170 million contract to construct the Antares rocket and Cygnus spacecraft. SpaceX and Orbital Sciences completed their projects on time and received the full funding of the contracts. Towards the end of their respective projects, NASA increased the number of milestones and funding to give a public demonstration on how the cargo would be delivered to the International Space Station. In total, the company spent around $800 million on the COTS program. NASA's also spent more than $20 billion on its space launch system that is yet to fly, so it's very clear how using commercial companies is way cheaper. The COTS system also pushed SpaceX to go on and create the first stage of the Falcon 9 reusable, kicking off the commercial space revolution and making the Falcon 9 one of the most successful rockets to date. NASA saw COTS as such a success that it instructed the Johnson Space Center History Office to document the program in a report based on multiple hours of interviews. In fact, the agency successfully implemented the same strategy for the commercial crew program in 2011, which, nine years later, saw the SpaceX Dragon deliver astronauts to the ISS on March 7, 2020. As for rocket plane Kistler, they went on a downward spiral. The company faced severe financial difficulties leading to most of its staff being laid off in February of 2009. Shortly after that, the company consolidated business operations in Wisconsin. Things then went from bad to worse. In only a few months, Rocket Plane Inc., together with its subsidiaries, went financially broke and were forced to close their main headquarters. The company went on to collect more than $18 million in state tax breaks and closed its Oklahoma City headquarters indefinitely, including its hangar located in Burns Flat. A few months later, on June 15, 2010, Rocket Plane Inc. CEO George French filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. The bankruptcy papers revealed that the company had just over $100,000 in assets, including tools and hardware for the K-1 rocket, as well as several trademarks and patents. In December of 2011, Space Assets LLC tried to revive Rocket Plane Kistler and transform it into a new company, Kistler Space Systems. But it looks like things haven't gone according to plan, because in June of 2020, the company's website was abandoned. As of now, we are yet to see any evidence of Kistler Aerospace resurfacing. And that brings us to the end of the video. Let us know in the comment section down below if you think Kistler Aerospace will ever get a second chance to compete with SpaceX. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell to get more engaging content in the tech world straight to your feed. Until next time, welcome to the future.